Good evening. Thank you for coming back and listening again. This really means a lot to me that you come and listen to these devotionals. I wanted to share with you from the Gospel of John this evening. Now, John is such a fascinating character for me in the Bible because you read the Gospel of John, and John is uh, so different from the other apostles in the way he goes about describing things. The Gospel of John is 92% unique from the other Gospels. So if you're kind of like me and you just kind of read the Bible and you kind of thought, okay, well, they basically are accounts of all the same thing. Now, John is really different. John comes at things at a completely different angle. There's little to no parables in John. John focuses really on a lot of relationships, um, which I'm not saying he does that all the time. Uh, in, in the book of Revelation, he also wrote that. That is a very deep and very detailed, um, articulate, uh, prophetical type of material, which is actually very, very difficult to understand. And John, the Gospel of John, is pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of interactions with Jesus and people, and uh, yet it has a profound depth to it. And I'd say one of the biggest things that John comes back to is this topic of love. And I've just been thinking about this recently as I've been going through John. Uh, he referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Have you ever referred to yourself that way? Uh, uh, Jonathan is the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now put your name there. You're the disciple whom Jesus loves, those of you who have come to know him as your Savior. Um, and I was thinking about what the world defines as love. Um, there's all these secular songs. We found love. This is what it is. Or defining love. Perhaps love is this. Perhaps love is that. Um, all you need is love, right? So the world gives you a bunch of descriptions of love. That means when, I, when I'm referring to the world, I'm talking about everybody around us. They say, here's what love is. And honestly, it makes it love almost a subjective thing. To me, love is this, and to them, love is that. And then they think, well, that's beautiful. You've got these two worlds that are in complete conflict with each other. One says love is this, one says love is that. What God's word says is love is one thing. And love is, uh, there's a corrupt type of love and there's a real type of love. Have you ever felt really disappointed with the love of human relationships? I think we're all there. Everybody's going to disappoint you. Your mom's going to disappoint you. Your dad's going to disappoint you. Your brothers and sisters are going to disappoint you. Your wife is going to disappoint you. Your husband is going to disappoint you. Probably a lot more than the wives are. <laughs> There's going to be disappointments around every corner because people fail us. Uh, we're tainted by a wrong type of love for a love that isn't even really authentic. So what is love? How do we define it? Well, I think John did this pretty well. In chapter 4 of his gospel... Uh, he needed to go through Samaria. Yep, verse 4. And he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it was that says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? She didn't understand. You know what she has? She has the world's perception of love. Jesus is trying to communicate something to her about love. And I'm going to prove that she had the wrong type of love in a little bit here. She says then, Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as well as his sons and his livestock. 
Jesus answered and said to her, he didn't answer her question, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst, but the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You've well said I have no husband, for you've had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The spirit and truth is directly linked to the correct type of love. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ, and when he comes, he's going to tell us, or he will tell us, all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. At this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. And no one said, What do you seek, or why are you talking with her? Notice that it's kind of interesting. They were shocked that he was speaking with a woman. See, they had a tainted view of love as well. They misunderstood how you should interact with people. We all have it. It was just a different type. Then the woman, listen carefully now, this is important, left her water pot, went her way to the city, and said to the men, interesting, it was just men, come and see a man who told me that all the things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And they went out of the city and came to him. <clears throat> now, she went into a place where there was a well, and she went to draw water, and she thought, this is going to quench my thirst. And Jesus said to her, that's not going to quench your thirst. What you're going to come and drink from me is going to quench your thirst. In other words, the love you've been seeking there in that well of the world, it's like salt water. You keep drinking it and drinking it and drinking it, hoping you'll get better results. Sometimes we hope we get better results toward people around us. Trying again, trying again, trying again. We just don't get those good results because, well, our love is broken and we misunderstand love very, very deeply. We twist the whole meaning of love and make it the opposite of what God designed it to be. And that's exactly what she had done. She had tried to seek love in the wrong way. And Jesus said, if you drink of my water, you're never going to get thirsty again. Now that is something we all long for, but we never get. My soul longs and even thirsts for the living God. As a deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after you. See, these are different references that says, I really long for this God, for him to quench my thirst and to quench my needs of what real love is, what authentic love is. And embracing God as the ultimate source of love. He is love. God is love. He's full of loving kindness and forgiveness, right? For all who will repent and put their faith in him.
Sometimes life is like a desert All the things you thought were water were just pain What mirage seems to appear Though I run in reach and cry it won't come Doesn't he see the deepest longing within me? I feel so dry and feel so used. I know my sin has broken me in two, but what can I do? told me all the things I had done, that all the dryness in my soul could be undone. The words he spoke reached in my soul, so that his words my shattered life could make whole. And he saw the deepest longing within me, though I was dry and I was used. I know my sin is not broken into, it's not in what I do. Oh,